Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Since I'll be away this next weekend, I wanted to put up something very briefly uh, to go over uh, two verses in the fourth chapter in Surah An-Nisa that I wanted to cover since I'll be away, but I wanted to give just something to reflect on. And I'm looking at these two verses to remind us that truth can often be bittersweet, still sweet, but it can be bitter. And so if we look at these two verses, this is uh, Ayahs 121 and 122 in Surah An-Nisa. Allah Ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سُنُدَخِلْهُمْ جَنَّاتِ As for those who believe in Allah, right, and believe in Allah, believe that He is one, and so on, and they do what He commands of righteous deeds, praying, fasting, you name it, سُنُدَخِلْهُمْ uh, جَنَّاتِ They will be entered into paradise as a reward in the next life. تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْرِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبْدًا And of which they will reside under, there are rivers in which they flow. Uh, in there, there are rivers that are flowing and they will abide there timelessly for forever. وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا And the promise of Allah is true. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is the promise of Allah? Allah says, وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا Obviously, وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا means it obviously applies to the statement just said that if you believe in Allah and you do good deeds that inshallah you will go to paradise but there's also something else we can take because this part here will read and be connected with as an important related to the connecting verse وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا وَمَنْ أَزْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا and who is more truthful in speech than Allah. Who is more tr- truthful in speech than God? Laysa, because you can connect these, if you look, there is a shadda on the lamb of Laysa. So it can be connected. وَمَنْ أَزْدَقُوا مِنَ اللَّهِ قَلِيلًا لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَأَمَانِي وَلَا أَمَانِي أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ so the next verse begins, لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِي أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ uh, That Allah's divine providence, Allah's grace, His will, His command, His, his irada, his, his will of what will be and what will not be, لَيْسَ and look at how Allah is addressing the believers here directly in the second person. Second person plural. He is talking here to the Muslims. Then refers in third person to the people of the book, Jews and Christians, so to speak. Men ya'mal su'an وَلَا يَجِدَ لَوْهُ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا And so Allah is saying that when it comes to justice, when it comes to requital, when it comes to what a person has earned, if a person does something evil and it cannot, there is no kafara for it, there's no expiation for it, there's no forgiveness for it, uh, a person doesn't make amends or told whatever that it is, then what? يُجْزَبِهِ وَلَا يَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا Then that person, uh, they will simply get what they earned and they will have none that can help them in that. And this verse is powerful because one of the common modern criticisms against religion uh, in general in the modern day is that it is all just uh, partisan politics. One group vying for another of who gets to go to paradise. And what is, you know, this is a, a, I'm not saying that that kind of argument is uh, unfounded in that religious peoples have fought and contended with each other. uh, But then again, so do secular people. I mean, just look what's going on right now, you know, around the world and let alone what this country has done since the, the founding of its existence. So human con- conflict is an essential, quintessential part of 
the human behavioral set. We, whether we are religious or secular, uh, we will vie and compete and, and, and we'll fight one another. That's just part of the human condition. And so that's not something especially blameworthy of religion. It's just a part of the human condition, whether that human uh, is a religiously inclined or secularly inclined. But nonetheless, it is often uh, uh, used as a means of uh, antagonizing religion to make it seem as if it is somehow extra special, right, in its uh, divisiveness. And what's really remarkable about the, uh, the narrative of the Qur'an is that while this is unabashedly a book, it's, it's sent to all of mankind. But it's also, it's like hudan lid muttaqeen. It's, it's a guidance for the people of taqwa. So even, a, even several levels above, right, belief is it's a guidance for people of piety, you could say, right? So the, the, in simple terms, the Qur'an, it's a book for the Muslims. It's a call to everybody, but it is a book for the Muslims, right, unabashedly. And yet at the same time, it's telling those Muslims that when it comes to the irada of Allah, to the will of Allah, when it comes to how Allah will uh, judge people and how we can expect what will uh, our uh, judgment be on that final day and in the hereafter, we have to understand that there will be, um, in some sense, no, uh, I don't want to say there's nothing special about being Muslim because Allah says, you know, uh, for those alladina amanu wa aminu salihat, in another verse, Allah talks about you kafiru anhum sayyatihim wa yudakhilhum jannat. That it's true, those who believe, you know, believe in Allah but still sin. They believe in Allah, they pray, they fast, but they still sin. That Allah will, will uh, insha'Allah, overlook some of their, their bad deeds that they did. That being said, doing things that are just horrible and evil, that one cannot just take an attitude of, well, you know, as long as I'm on team A, it doesn't matter what I do because uh, I'm on team A. If I were in team B, right, then it also wouldn't matter what I did of good because uh, uh, I'm on team B and so team A is out. And so what Allah is saying that even though this is a book revealed as a, as a call to all of mankind, and as a specific guidance for those that accept that call and then respond to it with belief and action, that they still have to be weary uh, of towing a certain kind of line. And it's hard, that's a bitter truth. Sometimes we may feel that because we are doing uh, all the right things, that more things in life should be going our way. And uh, I, I, that's kind of a, you know, I, I would say that's probably a combination of natural human tendency, right? Because you feel like, well, I'm doing all the right things. I should, you know, I should get my stuff. Um, but at the same time, undoubtedly, that is also an umniya, right? The plural of al-amani. And one of the things about al-amani in the verses preceding this, just before that we talked about over the last couple of weeks is... One of the things that Shaitan promised is that he would fill us with al-amani, al-umniya, right? He would fill us with those uh, grandiose notions that are often axiomatic on the self, right? What we feel we are entitled to, or grand visions, or, you know, fantasies, al-amani. So something to think about. Uh, just wanted to leave since I won't be teaching the Saturday class for today and also I won't be teaching next week. Inshallah, we will return back October 16th. So this was, again, the fourth chapter, Surah An-Nisa. You can check it out, inshallah, read for yourselves. وَنُصَلِّ وَنُصَلِّمْ وَبَارَكَ لَا سَيْدْنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَىٰ أَلِي وَصَحْبِي أَجْمَعِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ جَزَاكَمَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا السَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَبَرَكَاتُهُ